Hey kids, today we're going to be learning about two scientists, Alfred Wegener and Harry Hess. All right, we have the synopsis here. Alfred Wegener showed evidence in 1912 that the continents are moving, but geologists rejected his ideas at first, partially because Wegener was not a geologist. He also could not explain how the continents moved. Almost 50 years later, Wegener's ideas were confirmed. Harry Hess proved Wegener right by using evidence of the ocean floor spreading to explain what moved the continents. Now this last sentence, we are going to highlight, we should try to highlight these last two sentences so that you can see the relationship between Harry Hess and Wegener. All right, the next heading, balloons in Arctic air. Alfred Wegener was born in Berlin, Germany. He received a PhD in astronomy from the University of Berlin in 1904. However, his real love was air balloons. He and his brother Kurt set the world's record in 1906 for the longest time spent in a balloon. They floated through the air for 52 hours. Later that year, Wegener joined an expedition to Greenland. He would use his expertise with air balloons to track polar air circulation. Wegener had always dreamed of polar exploration. Now these two paragraphs are just setting up the background knowledge. We do not need to highlight any information in these two paragraphs simply because it's just giving us some background knowledge. All right, now continental drift. Wegener studied the atmosphere as a meteorologist. Although he was earning respect for his work, his mind kept roaming. By 1910, he had noticed on a map that the east coast of South America fits exactly against the west coast of Africa. Now, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that sentence because it's telling us a piece of information of what he noticed. It appeared as if they had once been joined. I'm going to highlight that sentence as well simply because it's telling us what he noticed about it. He found evidence that had that it had, and in 1915, published The Origins of Continents and Oceans. In the book, he claimed that about 300 million years ago, the continents formed a single mass. He labeled it Pangaea, a Greek word meaning whole earth. We need to label or highlight that sentence because that is what he called the giant landmass. Now, Wegener was not the first to present the idea of continental drift but he beat everyone else in putting together evidence from different scientific approaches. That is important to know, that he beat everybody else in putting together the evidence. For instance, he located ancient tropical plants on the Arctic island of Spitsbergen. This is thousands of miles from where scientists would expect to find them. He also found rocks and mountains on different continents that were similar. He pointed out that the Appalachian Mountains in the United States are similar to the Scottish Highlands. He located rock layers in South Africa that matched those in Brazil. And we are going to highlight that evidence as well. So we highlighted the evidence that helped him prove his point. Geologists mocked Wegener's ideas. That means they made fun of him. Wegener was not even a geologist. Who was he trying to overturn their beliefs? Besides, he could not explain what caused the continents to plow through the Earth's crust. It would have required immense force. In 1930, Wegener led another trip to Greenland. He celebrated his 50th birthday there at an isolated weather station. On his return trip back to the coast, he died. All right, so now let's talk about seafloor spreading. Scientists keep, kept talking about the idea of the continental drift. During World War II, sounding gear produced new evidence of what the seafloor looked like. The gear, called sonar, was developed in the 1930s. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and create another video to continue on.